Ronnie Ward from the Dipmas section of the Flatbush neighborhood, Brooklyn, in the city of New York. Friday, the third day of May, 2024, from the Epic Times. Arkansas Governor Sanders issues executive order defying Biden administration's Title IX rule. Arkansas Governor Sanders issues executive order defying Biden admin's Title IX rule. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders issued an executive order on Thursday directing state schools to defy the Biden administration's expansion of Title IX protections to include students identifying as transgender. The Republican governor's order, signed on Thursday, asserts the state's commitment to preserving the traditional understanding of sex as an immutable characteristic of the human body firmly rooted in biology and the created order. The government should celebrate, not erase, sex differences by providing proper protections for them, the order reads. It also states that the Biden administration has rejected reality and chosen to appease their left-wing base over students' safety and best interests. The order comes in response to the Biden administration's recent redefinition of sex under Title IX to include gender identity a move viewed by Ms. Sanders as a departure from the law's original intent. The Biden administration is attempting to unilaterally rewrite federal law to advance its radical gender ideology against women and girls, reads the order by Ms. Sanders, who once served as press secretary during the Trump administration. Ms. Sanders said in her order that the new rules expanded definition of sex to include sexual orientation and gender identity was plainly ridiculous. She said it would lead to males unfairly competing in women's sports, receiving access to women's and girls' locker rooms, bathrooms, and private spaces, and competing for women's scholarships. The reinterpretation of Title IX by the Biden administration, outlined in a document spanning nearly 460,000 words, has also drawn criticism from a slate of GOP attorneys general who have filed lawsuits challenging it. Ms. Sanders notes in her order that, compared to the lengthy rewrite, the original Title IX contained a succinct 37 words when it was signed into law in 1972. Title IX is a landmark 1972 civil rights law that aims to eliminate discrimination based on sex in federally funded educational programs and to provide equal opportunities for women. The new rule, which redefines sex to include gender identity, was announced on April 19th. Schools and colleges that fail to comply with this new rule may lose federal funding. Arkansas lawmakers have passed several laws in the past few years to protect sex-designated restrooms, ensure that students don't share sleeping quarters with members of the opposite sex, ensure fairness in women's sports by barring the inclusion of males, and prevent the use of preferred pronouns at public schools and state-supported education institutions. Under the executive order, Arkansas state schools and colleges are mandated to uphold these state laws. The Arkansas Department of Education is ordered to provide specific guidance on how to enforce the rights of Arkansans to equal opportunity, free speech, due process, and privacy under the U.S. Constitution, Title IX, and state law. Despite the Biden administration's unlawful administrative rule, the order reads, At no point should Arkansas law be ignored. Furthermore, schools were instructed to abide by the 2023 Arkansas law that prohibits public school and state employees from using names or pronouns that do not align with a student's birth gender without the consent of the parents. Speaking at the Arkansas Capitol in Little Rock on Thursday, Ms. Sanders said she had a clear message for the president's administration, we will not comply. If Biden gets his way, female college students will shower and change next to male college students, referring to someone using biologically correct pronouns will get you all in front of a disciplinary board for harassment and scholarships previously reserved for women will now be open to anyone claiming to be a woman, Ms. Sanders said, according to multiple outlets. Over a dozen Republican-led states have filed lawsuits against the U.S. Department of Education arguing that the new Title IX regulations are unlawful. The Arkansas governor said her state would also sue the Biden administration for any financial loss, including loss of funding, 
incurred by the state due to the passage of the Biden administration's unscientific agendas. When contacted by the Epoch Times, a spokesperson for the Education Department said, Department crafted the final Title IX regulations following a rigorous process to give complete effect to the Title IX statutory guarantee that no person experiences sex discrimination in federally funded education. As a condition of receiving federal funds, all federally funded schools are obligated to comply with these final regulations, and we look forward to working with school communities all across the country to ensure the Title IX guarantee of non-discrimination in school is every student's experience. This report was updated with a statement by the Education Department. Well, good going for Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders and the 12 states Republicans' attorney generals who have filed suit. Remember, the suit is against the bureaucratic administrative state, the regulation. The suit isn't against Title IX, the law. If the Biden administration wants transgenderism or intersexism or bisexuality or any other gender sexuality to be covered by the law, then pass a law through Congress. Have it introduced, debated, discussed, passed by the House and the Senate and sent to the President's desk for signature, then it's the law of the land. Then it will be subject to constitutional scrutiny by the Supreme Court. You can't undo President Nixon's law and the Congress of the 72 by adding it by administrative bureaucratic fiat. Governor Huckabee Sanders is correct, and so are the 12 states' attorneys generals <coughs> who are bringing suit against the administrative passage effective April 19th. Swift action. They're not against people who are transgendered or people who are gay or bisexual or intersex. They're against a runaway administrative state doing by regulation that which is not even in the law. That is unconstitutional. Good for them for bringing suit. <coughs> I'm not playing politics. I'm not a political person, really. I am, as all people are, but I'm not taking a Republican or Democrat or liberal or conservative or moderate or pragmatic or skeptic approach to this. It's simply a matter of the law, jurisprudence, the philosophy of the law of the United States of America according to our Constitution. These administrative regulations are fiat. They fly in the face of our founding document, the Constitution of the United States of America. If anything, I'm for constitutionalism. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, Agnostic, Atheistic, a nun, a non, I don't care. We must, as a nation, the United States of America, stick to the four corners of the document the Constitution of the United States of America, effective September 17, 1789, as duly amended, I think, 27 times. Otherwise, 
we stand for nothing. I've done so much with so little for so long. I can now practically do anything with nothing? No. The United States of America is not a poor nation constitutionally. There are democracies across this world, this globe, of snow-capped mountains, white, blue, and green, that have modeled their constitutions and sought to increase opportunities for all based on the exemplar of the United States of America Constitution of 1789. It's the longest standing constitutional democratic republic in the world. That means something important to every person, be they the North Pole, Antarctica, around the equator, or anywhere in between. I am a scholar of jurisprudence. I'm not a partisan. I'm not into pogroms. I'm not into the state taking any life be it just conceived or as a matter of capital punishment either. But that's personal. It's up to the Constitution and its amendments and the laws of this land duly passed by both houses of Congress and signed by the President of the United States or if sent to the President's desk and vetoed, overturned by two-thirds vote of each house. Or if, as amended, the Constitution of the United States, according to the exact procedure as declared in the Constitution itself, we've done it 27 times without a constitutional convention. I'm not for the people who play around with that idea either. It's cockeyed cockamamie as well. But even that would be subject to a decision by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. And I have a funny feeling that the John Roberts Court would use the highest, most strictest scrutiny that they've ever even Im not imagined should anyone step forward and say, oh, We've got the right number for a constitutional convention. Oh, by God, that will go straight to the Supreme Court. And mark my word, that conservative court will probably have a unanimous decision about whatever they would decide such a case would mean. And I'll guarantee you this, <laughs> they won't decline to take the case. And they'll set it for oral arguments. And it will be heard. And everyone in a stay will be put in. Pending decision. And it might be a cold day on the equator. Before a decision ever got handed down. Because I know this. They want it to be unanimous. And it might take quite some time for nine justices to come to a unanimous decision on that. So, oh well. Ronnie Ward from the Ditmas section of the Flatbush neighborhood, Brooklyn in the city of New York, Friday the third day of May 2024. I don't know. 8 p.m. in the evening sounds good to me.